Hello and welcome in the next section. In this section, we will talk about generating the text using recurrent neural networks on decentralized data. And we will start with discussing loading and preparing an example and a data, a text data set. So let's have a look at our example. So in the source directory for this section, we have slightly modified example from the standard TensorFlow Federated tutorial example. And the goal of this example is to show the two very important aspects of, you know, how federated learning can be done in a bit different manner. So the first thing that we are really interested in is actually how we can improve a pre-trained model using TensorFlow Federated. And in some cases, you know, training models from scratch on the centralized data doesn't make sense or maybe it would be much more effective to do that actually using pre-trained models and the language detection or language classification models are example of that. When you pre-train them, they contain this core kind of a structure that we want to then later use for to actually, you know, tweak our model using our own data from all those decentralized clients. So it makes sense to you know, when you work with text to actually use pre-trained models. So in previous example, we've evaluated using the federated data learning TensorFlow federated machinery. And now we will see how to do that locally. Okay, so let's get started. And the data preparation phase of this example is very similar to the one in the original non-federated example. So the only really important change this example is to extend the vocabulary that we are using. So if you're not familiar with generating text or this example, our goal here is to generate or, you know, train model that will generate a text. And here we are slightly modifying this example because we have our decentralized data will be the data from Shakespeare. And our pre-trained model is trained on Dickens' texts. And we have to expand our vocabulary to both Shakespeare's and also Dickens. And here we are working on a character level. So our vocabulary will be pretty much just the characters that are available in both of those texts. So this is the big change that we've got from the original non-federated example. And the rest of the code is pretty much similar. And we start with just defining the vocabulary. And then we have to encode the text. And to do that, we have to create those tables that will map the characters to indexes and indexes to characters because we can't directly work with texts in neural networks. And we have to encode them as numbers. So this is why we do that. And after we've done those first steps, we can then load our decentralized simulated data set. And this will be, as I've mentioned, uh, Shakespeare's texts. And this is very similar to previous examples. So we are using TFF simulation data sets and then Shakespeare and we run load data method on that. And what we receive from that is train data and test data. And we are then again getting a text for a specific client using create TF data set for client. And in this case, each client is pretty much composed of two identifiers. The first one, this is the name of the plane. So in this example, we have the tragedy of King Lear. This is the first part. And then we have a specific part for a character. So the first part, this is the name of the play and the name of the character that we are interested in. And here we have the tragedy of King Lear and the name of the character is King. So this is how this particular data set has been created. And keep in mind that throughout this documentation, pretty much throughout the documentation, there's always this mention that in the real world scenario, we don't really have IDs for clients. So in federated learning settings, we treat uh, all those clients differently without any IDs. 
but it's kind of a useful to have those LEDs in simulation setting. Okay, and the next step is to pretty much just show some of the snippets from this train data set and just keep in mind that we have our and the actual text inside the snippet key. So using snippet key, we can actually produce the text. And then the next steps are pretty much similar to the original example. We have to basically encode our text for training. We need to convert it into numbers. And let's just scroll down a little bit. So the main kind of an entry point for that is our preprocess uh, function. And when you have a look at preprocess function, it's basically doing a few transformations on our data set. And, you know, we first mapping those uh, characters that we have in our training data set to identifiers. And then we have to split those into characters because we are working on a character level. So here we provide an input, one character, and then we want our model to detect or predict the next one. So this is what we basically do. We just learn those, just one character having a probability or getting the probability of the next one. And after that, we have to kind of split our encoded text into a specific batches. And if we, here we have a C clang plus one. This is the, the line that we have to shape our data into. And after that, we also have to shuffle the data and slice it again into mini batches. And at the end, we basically turn all this into the tuples of X and Y. So inputs and targets. And if you want to know more about exactly why those transformations were used as they were, have a look at the original non-federated example, right? And there are two utility functions that we've used in this example. So two IDs we have and also split input target. We won't get into that. So this part is not different than just preparing the text as you would prepare for recurrent your networks on a character level model for recurrent neural networks. So this is no different than that.